Hello, this is Steve Ramona, your host for Doing Business with a Servant's Heart. I want to thank our sponsors, InPhone, and with InPhone, you can place your business on everybody's cell phone, turn their business into a web app, and with a click of a button, they'll have access to you 24-7. And also Pantheon.fm. Have you ever thought about monetizing and taking your podcast to the next level? Well, Pantheon can do that. Let us show you how. Reach out to Steve Ramona, the host, at info.co slash sr1, and I will go over with you how you can make your podcast really stand out. Let's enjoy the show. Thanks again, everybody. Welcome, everyone. To doing business with a servant's heart podcast and this is your guest steve ramona and i am super pumped to have this guest today he's a man of faith he's lived that life still lives that life but he decided to go out into the to the real world business world and start a business and help others with everything he's learned over the years steve welcome to the show thanks for having me steve appreciate it great well, plus you have here. a great you have a great name, so that really that, that, that makes just it does it, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> you should listen because of the name. Yeah. Uh, but besides that, so what got you into coaching pastors? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I've been I was a pastor of a church. I'm I'm from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. If you don't know where that is, that's on the far west coast of Canada. You can't go any more west coast than Victoria, British Columbia. Beautiful city. And um, I've, I grew up here, lived in Vancouver for a while, came back to Victoria, spent 32 years pastoring a church here in Victoria. Uh, it was, a, it was a, for our city, it was a significant church with a couple of campuses, started a, um, uh, also co-founded a, a nonprofit on the Baja of Mexico to help under-resourced um, people down in that area. And you know, after after 32 years of pastoring, uh, I've come to believe that pastoring is not for the faint of heart. And I, I've seen the toll that pastoring has taken on pastors. And so even before I left um, my, my pastoring position, I was reaching out and coaching other pastors. And I decided last September to step out of my role and just give myself full time to really reaching out to nonprofit leaders, but especially pastors and just helping them thrive rather than just survive in this post pandemic world we find ourselves in. I love to help in the nonprofit world, which I just learned today audience. And that's why I love doing these shows. You learn about your guests. So I'm going to guess, and you answer this pastors are great at sermons, great at everything a pastor does, but they're not real good in business. There, well, here's the deal. I was talking to a pastor yesterday about a situation they were dealing with. And he, the pastor said to me, you know, seminary prepared me for caring for people, weddings, funerals, hospital visits, all of that. It prepared me to preach well. It did not prepare me to lead well. And, you know, there's three circles in 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 church world. One is the community that's your congregation. The other is the cause, your vision, your mission. And the third is every church has a corporate side to it, you know, a, a business side to it. And, and, and they're not prepared. Pastors are not prepared to lead well in that sector generally. Yeah. And that's great. Cause it, the first two are easy for them because they've been taught that it's that's right. the corporate sites, not and for example, my church raised about five to 6 million a year. That's a huge business. That is, right there. and there, and we're called to be good stewards of of what we take in financially and people's time and all of that, and 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 leading, it, like I just said, is not for the faint of heart today across the board. Doesn't matter whether you're a for profit, non profit church, leading is is tough business today. And I see pastors, they're just they're some of them are burning out, some of them are just surviving in their role, some of them are thriving. And and some are flaming out. You know, they're getting involved in things they shouldn't get involved in. And 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 I think often that is just self-sabotage because yeah. the pressure is too much. Yeah, and, and I would think too, a lot of it's financial. Because I know you know you're a pastor, so you know you weren't making millions of dollars. No, pastoring. no, no, not at all. And but you know, like 
70 percent of pastors don't have a close friend wow so it is it is lonely at the top leading no matter what you're leading but 70 percent of pastors don't have a close friend they have nobody to go to and so they've got to keep it all inside you know and, th and that's why 71 percent of pastors are either stressed or highly stressed they, they don't have a community to go to and in i read an interesting stat in canada 16 percent of pastors are diagnosed with clinical depression that is twice the rate of the general population wow well that's a telling sign right there yeah and 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 it, we you know it's 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 a huge responsibility and that's why i want to walk alongside pastors and pour into them and uh, that's why i started my little company two-step coaching and consulting so let's go in that hole a little bit deeper in that hole so yep. i'm a pastor and i'm falling into that possible depression hole what would you do to help me coach me mentor me to get out of that hole and succeed sure that that's a great question i called it two-step coaching and consulting for a reason step one and this is a step we often miss when we're coaching and consulting is is focusing first on the pastor themselves how are they doing and so step one is helping a pastor get healthy, energized, and focused. Then step two is helping them lead at their best and achieve their dreams for their church, for their team, helping them create a healthy team. But the first step, you know, I, I said to my staff at the church I've led, and I say to everybody I engage with, the best gift you can give yourself, your family, your friends, your team, the organization or the church you're leading is a healthy, energized, focused you. That's powerful. You're not going to lead well if you're not healthy and energized and focused. In fact, I had a staff member once years ago. He sat down and he looked across my desk and he said, Steve, when you're healthy and energized, you are a joy to work with. And when you're not, not so much. There you go. And that was a real telling moment for me. And I think today, again, leading is not for the faint of heart and too many leaders, too many pastors are just not healthy and energized and focused. And I think when we come to people and we say to them, here's a new program, a new vision, a new strategy, and they're going, I'm already drowning. I think the first thing is, and I have a whole module around helping, helping pastors and leaders get healthy, energized, and focused. I, I love that. How much does your experience as a pastor help with your coaching? Oh, uh, I say today, I'm still pastoring. I'm just pastoring leaders and coaches from a different perspective. I'm still a pastor. I, I, I pastor and, and coach and mentor leaders and, and pastors now. I just don't do it in the church context. I would think I'm, that's in your blood. It's going to always and be it, in your blood. It totally, it totally is, is shaped how I engage and how I um, walk alongside people. Absolutely. Let's talk about, you mentioned something which I didn't know, nonprofit leaders. Define that a little bit for the audience and what you do with them. Yeah, same basic idea. I Everything I do, I, per, I, I, I personalize and tailor. I have a framework, like for instance, let's, I, you know, I have the um, healthy, energized and focused, getting you healthy, energized. I call that module, fill your tank. And I have exercises on drain and fill in the ideal week. And I tailor and and, and Taylor, uh, I'm not Taylor, I personalize that to pastors or nonprofit leaders in their context. And a nonprofit leader is someone who's leading a nonprofit organization. You know, it's not a for profit, it's a nonprofit. So it could be, um, you know, in our city here, we have the Mustard Seed Food Bank, we have the Union Gospel Mission, we have all kinds of nonprofits. They're just not for profit organizations. And those leaders face many of the same challenges that pastors are facing, um, not quite at the same level and depth. Pastoring is a very, very unique job in that your family, your uh, life is tied into the same organization and community that you're leading. And a little different in the nonprofit sector, but nonprofit leaders are running uh, 5013 C's in the United States is what you call it in the United States. They're, they're nonprofit organizations. And 
And I love to come alongside nonprofit leaders as well and say, how can I walk alongside you? And how can I help you get healthy, energized and focused and lead at your best and achieve your dreams? And I would guess your experience as a pastor, you work with nonprofits, these food banks. So you have experience all these years working with them. I do. And I co-founded a nonprofit in okay. Mexico. So I understand the nonprofit sector really well as well. I understand the challenges uh, that nonprofits are facing today. And, you know, it, it, we're coming out of a, a pandemic and life is different. And uh, the challenges of leading, whether it's even in the for-profit sector, are, are massive today. Yeah. And then with COVID, it's still changing. We might be three to five years and look completely different than we do today, Michelle. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's where we need accountability that you do uh, and work with. Um, oh, I had a question. Oh, the uh, so the, when you work with somebody, do you do a weekly, monthly? And it's one-on-one -on -one as well, correct? Right. I, I, I do one-on-one -on -one is my preferred method because I really believe transformation can happen when you, everything I do with anybody I work with is strictly confidential. And so- when you have high trust and trust is built, then, then again, pastors, 71% don't have a close friend, but when they can engage with someone that they can open up with and be honest with, we can do some great transformational work. And, uh, and so I like one-on-one, -on -one. generally speaking, I do um, uh, twice a month, every, every week from 45 minutes to an hour and 15 minutes with the person and just walk alongside them. I, I, I do three month engagements, but I really like to work for, with someone for at least a year because that's yeah. when we really see things happen. Accountability has got to be a big part of your coaching too, right? Accountability is a huge part of my coaching. In fact, coaching across the board, it doesn't matter what kind of coaching you're doing, health, life, executive coaching, leadership coaching, doesn't matter. Accountability is one of the big pieces of coaching. And when people know that they're accountable to somebody, uh, they 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 get things done. And uh, it, it really is transformative in people's lives to know, hey, I'm going to be talking to Steve next week and I have this action step. I got to get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that because that's what that's what it's about. That's what a coach is there for, amongst other things that what you do. That's one of the big things. Yes. Every session at the end of every session working with me you're going to have action steps that you've created and then and then you're going to set deadlines to those action steps and then at the first part after we do our check-in um during our next session together is going to be let's review your action steps how did you do and uh did you green light them yellow light them red light them and uh if they're yellow or red uh, what 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 happened that they didn't get done and we just explore that together you throw in a lot of knowledge here today. So I'm sure people are going to go, how do I get a hold of Steve? So how can people reach you? They can go to my, my website, uh, um, two step and it's T double T W O two step coaching.ca, or they can email me at Steve at two step coaching.ca. Awesome. And, and I love what you do. Cause you know, I'm a faith man. I just got baptized and we've talked about that. So I'm going to do a favor. I'm going to give four people, the first four people that reach out to you, Steve, from this podcast, and they mention the podcast by name or the show, I'm going to send them a $20 Amazon gift card. Oh, wow. There you go. Thank you for doing that. And by the way, if people haven't seen your baptism picture, it's amazing and inspiring. And uh, yeah. Amen. I just no, I appreciate that. Yeah. It's, and it's life changing. We'll come back to another show for that. Um, but audience just mentioned to him and he'll reach out to me and I'll get you an Amazon gift card because I put my money where my mouth is. When I see good people, it always starts with good people. And then you throw experience in there. One plus one equals a million to me. I know it doesn't add in mathematics, but in life it works. What are, or what's your, your definition of servant leadership? What is my definition of servant leadership? Uh, a leader is there to serve their people. And the definition, I guess the best definition I have of servant leadership is you walk into what you're leading and you say, I'm there to serve my God and I'm there to serve 
my people. I'm there to love God and I'm there to love my team. And if I go in with the idea that I'm there to love God and love my team, I'm going to be a servant to them. And uh, so my definition of servant leadership is love God and love others and go in with that perspective and you're, you're going to do well as a leader. What a foundation to start a business or to scale up a business from just that. And it's not hard. It's just all mindset. Um, and how much is mindset part of your coaching? It's huge. Mindset's huge, 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 huge. Your mindset, you know, um, limiting beliefs with, versus a growth mindset and having a mindset that's open to, I always talk about when you set goals, you don't want to set them in your comfort zone and you don't want to set them in your delusional zone. You want to set them on your discomfort zone, almost in your delusional zone. And when you start thinking, I'm going to push myself out of my comfort zone and I'm going to push myself significantly out of my comfort zone, that creates a growth mindset and, and great things happen. Um, yeah. So mindset's huge. Too many of us live with too small of a view of ourselves, of our God, of our situation. And we, we never achieve our potential because we're too comfortable. Yeah. We've got to get out of our comfort zone to see great things happen. The comfort, that is so big. What's, uh, you've worked with a lot of pastors now in your coaching and before, what's one of the biggest challenge pastors have? Oh, I, I think there's a ton. I Right now, currently, I think the impact of the pandemic. Wow. I, I, I think that's probably the biggest challenge pastors are facing right now is just the impact of the pandemic in a whole bunch of ways. Here's one of the, if I can, one of the key things that's happening is as we came out of the pandemic last fall, people in churches were going, we're out of the pandemic. Let's go. Let's take the next hill. And the pastors are going, I just led through two years of a pandemic. I am tired. I don't have the energy to take the next Hill. And so there's this expectation that pastors are struggling to meet because they're tired. Almost every pastor I talk to today says, I'm tired. Part of that fatigue, too, is the money lost. Donations yeah, yeah. That well, that's part too. of the, yeah, yeah. When I talk about the impact of the pandemic, I don't know what it's like in the United States, but in Canada, 30% of congregants have not come back to their churches. Wow. That's a lot. And so there's all kinds of impacts there. People are, and people that are coming back to the churches are less wanting to volunteer today. They've enjoyed the pandemic lifestyle, if you will, and don't want to get as busy as they were. And so lack of volunteers, lack of funds, lower attendance, it's it's a very challenging time. Yeah, it is. And, and, and we need coaches more than ever. I think everybody needs a coach. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Every, just like sports. You know, you talk Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, you know, absolutely. I just Bill Walton, I just watched his document and they had coaches. Yeah, Someone I was made. I was blessed years ago. Um, I was very fortunate to have a dinner with a man named Michael Hyatt. And and Michael Hyatt said at the end of our dinner, Who's coaching you? I said, I don't have a coach. He said, You need a coach. And I went and got a coach, and I'm on my on my fourth coach now, and I still have a coach, and it is transformative in my life. What the best money I ever spent in professional development in ministry was getting a coach. Um, yeah, you, you know, people all everybody goes to the conferences, but studies show us, depending which study you read, 90 to 95 percent of people that attend conferences never apply anything they learned at the conference. Or it lasts a week and then yeah. it goes away and they go back to their old house. You feel good. You get motivated, yeah. but you don't apply it. You know, you take that same money you'd spend going to a conference, invest it in a coach or a mentor, and you're going to see Boom. 10 times, 100 times impact on your life and ministry. That's so well said, because in sports, why do they practice every day? Because the coach has to work with them. And you're just practicing twice a month with them. That's all you need. It's the same right. thing. And unfortunately, people look at coaching as, oh, it's another expense. No, it's a needed expense. If you have a business... It's got to be right there doing your taxes, I think. Yeah, I don't call it an expense at all. I always said it was an investment. There you go. Thanks it's an investment. You're investing dollars. And I always say, you know, I say to church boards and others, 
if you keep your pastor healthy, energized, and focused, not only is your organization going to grow, not only are you going to do great things for God, but here's the other thing. Your pastor is not going to burn out. And there's a huge cost to the organization when pastors and other leaders burn out. You got you, you to gotta take care of them. You may have to go hire a new person. There's a lot of expense to that. But if I keep my leader healthy, energized, and focused, man, the, the, the sky's the limit. Yeah, you nailed it because our church did the same thing. We had Steve, his name was Pastor Steve. He just left after 20 years. He still teaches, but a younger guy came in. I, I don't know what Steve's 65, but it was time. And, and, and maybe it wasn't burnout, but he's yep. done it long enough. He can still do sermons and still be right. part of it. But him and his wife can go out and, and enjoy life that they've helped so many people with. So I've seen it. We got very lucky and got a great, you know, new leader. But around our area, I've heard a lot of people have left churches because a new person comes in and it just the energy's gone. And that's what you're saying, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely saying that if if you can keep a, a, your your pastor healthy, energized, and focused, and keep them growing, and they can stay in that environment and lead well. That is the best thing for a church. We're right out of time, but the other question that I think is really important, do you also work with the lead pastor, of course, but do you work with his team as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I've i been very fortunate to uh, get some materials from the table group, and I work with, uh, uh, I'm certified with the working genius uh, model also from the table group, and I, I love to work with teams. I think once you get a leader healthy, energized, and focused, then you want to get their team healthy and energized and focused and, and being high functioning and, uh, and same with boards, church boards struggle with stuff. And I love to come alongside church boards and church teams, as well as the senior leader and just walk with them and see what God's going to do. Yeah. Here in my church, we call them elders. Is that the same thing? Yeah. The board same or elders. Thing. Yeah. Yep. I figure it was just for my that audience. That was for me. He's educating yep. me, which is why yep. I love it. Yep. Now we run out of time here. I'm going to have you back because this is really important to me and you're doing such a great job and kudos and God bless you oh, for thanks. going out, helping pastors. I and mean, thank you for being on the show and taking the time to be here. Oh, thank so you for inviting it. me. Oh, appreciate you're very it. welcome. Last thing. And one more thing. Can you leave my audience with a tip that could help them in their journey of this great life? Absolutely. Here it is. The best gift you can give yourself, your family, your friends, your team, and your organization is a healthy, energized, focused you.